was early June 2017. I was taking a road trip with my nine-year-old son Tom to West Virginia to visit family. It was a long, stressful drive. My car didn't have working AC at the time, and it was an incredibly hot day, so we were a bit stressed out by the six-hour mark. We had left later in the day, so we were still on the road by dark. I think it was around 9 p.m. when we were still on the interstate and Tom started complaining that he needed to use the bathroom. There was already tension in the car before this, but his constant complaining brought about a slight argument between the two of us. It was about personal stuff I'd rather not share with the internet. At last, I saw a blue rest area sign zoom past us on the interstate, so I veered off into the rest area. It had a small building with two bathrooms, a couple vending machines, and a few benches. That was it. There were no other cars parked nearby besides some big white pickup truck. As I pulled up next to the building, Tom got out in a hurry and ran to the bathroom. I left the car on because I knew he'd be back soon. Like I said, I don't want to get into personal stuff, like why we had a bit of an argument, but it seemed we were at that stage where we weren't exchanging words anymore. I figured the rest of the ride would be silent. About a minute later, the back door opened and then shut. I wanted to say something to Tom, but I didn't know what to say, so I just stayed quiet and drove off. I noticed that the white pickup truck parked nearby was leaving as well. In fact, he was close behind me. I veered back onto the interstate and into the left lane, and the pickup truck did the same. I stepped on it a little, and so did he. He started flashing his lights, so I switched to the right lane, thinking he was nothing but an aggressive driver. But as soon as I switched to the right, so did he. He was still flashing his lights. I pulled into the right lane and started to slow down. He sped up, still in the middle lane, and when he caught up to me, he slowed down and lowered his window. I did the same, and he started yelling something to me, pointing at my car. He looked like a creepy, sketchy dude at first glance. I couldn't hear a word he was saying, so he pointed for me to pull over to the side. I told Tom to keep calm. In my head, I was saying if this guy tried to do anything funny, I would floor it. The pickup pulled up behind me on the grass and the guy came out of his truck running to my car. I put the car back in drive as my heart was racing, ready to drive, but then he screamed wait. He got to my window and said, that's not your kid, and pointed to the back seat. As he said this, I was confused and said, what? He said, that's not your kid that got in your car. Suddenly, the back right side door opened and I turned to see someone getting out of my car, not my son Tom. I got out from the car, screaming at the tall person who seemed to be a fully grown man, but they had already disappeared into the woods. I looked at the driver of the pickup and thanked him as I suddenly panicked, thinking about what could have happened to Tom. I got back in my car, crossed the grass between the interstate, and drove back to the rest area. The guy in the pickup followed me. We got back there in like 30 seconds to find Tom waiting outside the rest area bathroom. He got back in the car, all confused. I explained everything to him almost out of breath, as did the pickup driver. I thanked the guy one more time before he drove back to the spot he was sitting in before. Tom was so intrigued about what just happened, and I was so disturbed that we were back on good terms again. We chatted the whole rest of the way and told family about it as soon as we arrived. I never even got to see what the person who got in my car looked like. Honestly, maybe I should be happy I never turned around to look at them because I don't know what they would have done. My girlfriend and I took a road trip to California recently. The way there was completely normal. We left home early in the morning and got to the hotel by nightfall. On our way back home, however, we left midday and a majority of our ride was in the dark. The drive was about 10 hours each way, not including stops for food. We made two food stops, the first after about three hours of driving, then one more much later and deeper into the night. We got off the freeway at like 12.30 at night and went to the nearest Wendy's for food. We got right back on the freeway after that. I ate while I drove, which my girlfriend wasn't too fond of, but I just wanted to get home sooner rather than later. Shortly after getting back on the freeway, it started to rain. My girlfriend forced me to pull over now. She didn't want me eating and driving in poor conditions. As I pulled to the side, 
It actually started to downpour. I finished up eating my food, and then we heard a bang sound at the window. At first, I chalked it up to noises from the storm, but when I looked to my left out the window to see a figure blocking 90% of the window, along with the shriek of my girlfriends, I nearly had a heart attack. I didn't want to roll down the window given how hard it was pouring, but over the sound of the torrential rain pounding on the car, I couldn't hear what the person was saying. I opened the door a crack and yelled out to the person, who turned out to be a woman. She was soaked already and looked disheveled and scared. She asked for a ride, and what was I going to do? Tell her no in these conditions? I told her to get in the back seat. My girlfriend gave me a look. I don't know what kind of look exactly, but it looks kind of like a why the hell did you let her in kind of look. I asked the woman where she was heading. She didn't answer. I caught my girlfriend giving me a look again because of this. I ignored her and turned around to look at the woman in the back seat, assuming she didn't hear me. But as creepy as it was, she was actually looking right at me with a cold, unfriendly face. I'd say it was a neutral, blank face, but something about it was just off-putting. I repeated my question, and she just shrugged her shoulders and laughed. I looked at my girlfriend, who was once again looking at me. I said out loud that I'd be dropping the woman off at the next town we crossed. I guess I was announcing that to both my girlfriend and the woman. As we got back onto the barren highway, there was a sudden ear-piercing screaming sound coming from right behind me and the woman sitting behind me suddenly wrapped her arms around my throat. I slammed on the brakes as I was struggling to breathe, almost sliding into the divider. My girlfriend, quote, slashed at the woman's face with her long nails. The screaming turned from a deranged, angry kind of screaming to screams of pain and agony. I got out of the car as she had her hands pressed up against her face in agony. I then opened the back door, grabbed the woman with both hands, and literally threw her out of the car into the rain. She started begging, please, please, over and over as I looked down at her. But that's all she said. She cried as she kept saying the word, please. I ignored her and got back into my car and locked it. As I put the car in drive, there were bangs at the window as the woman started screaming again. Her screams once again sounded like the screams of a deranged mental asylum patient. I drove away casually as she was no longer a real threat, or at least not that I knew of. My girlfriend quickly got on the phone with the police and warned them of some suspicious, unstable woman lurking around the highway. We didn't stop again, though. We went straight home from there, obviously a bit shaken up and whatnot, but I didn't want to be thinking about that incident for any longer than I had to. It was 2010. I was driving my Ford F-150 from my home in Pennsylvania to Georgia. I had family in the countryside of Georgia who I'd be spending the week with. It was going to be a drive of around 14 hours, and I planned on doing it all in one day. I got on the road at 10 a.m. I stopped once for lunch at some deli, and then four hours later I stopped at a rest area to eat the turkey sandwiches I packed in the cooler. After that I didn't intend on making any other stops, besides for gas one more time of course. At about 11.30 p.m., I had just filled up the tank one more time, and now I had an ETA of about 12.30. I was admittedly getting very tired now. I didn't think to get coffee at the gas station for some reason. The route the GPS was taking me down from the gas station seemed a little odd. I wasn't on the highway anymore. It was just taking me down some country-ass side roads. My truck is high up, so I got a good view of everything and I also had a light bar installed, which really helped in lighting up these pitch black roads. I was so tired, and I knew I shouldn't have been driving anymore, but I was so close to my cousin's house that I had to keep going. I came to a stop sign and made a left turn off some quiet road onto an even quieter road. The speed limit on this road was 45 though, which was good. This road was empty of any kinds of buildings or houses. It was just woodland on either side. I was going like 55 to 60 miles per hour, blazing down this road since it really seemed like no other cars would be on this type of road at this hour. Then suddenly I saw like four shiny objects coming up fast in the road ahead of me. I slammed on the brakes and as I got closer, I figured out what they were. They were traffic drums, like those big cylinder traffic cones. 
my truck managed to come to a halt before I rammed into the drums. I got out of my truck with my baseball bat, confused as hell. I went over to the traffic drums and realized there was something else behind the traffic drums. It was a spike trap, like the kind police use. I didn't know what to think. Was there some kind of police activity going on? Or did somebody set this up as a trap? I cautiously looked all around me as I inched back to my truck. Then I heard someone scream help. It came from the woods on the left side of the road. There was no way I was about to go into those woods. The most I was willing to do was call out what's wrong. No answer. I walked to the edge of the road and looked into the forest. The only reason I could see anything was because of the lights from my truck. In the corner of my eye, I spotted him. Without looking directly at him, I saw someone crouch down behind a couple bushes. I didn't run, I just casually walked back to my car. When I got in and shut the door, I looked to my left to see two silhouettes by the edge of the woods on the side of the road, walking towards my truck. I drove the truck to the right side of the road onto the dirt and past the spike trap. I don't think they anticipated me actually going around, but when I looked in the rearview mirror, I saw at least three silhouettes standing by the traffic drums, lit up only briefly by the taillights of my truck. A few seconds later, they were gone out of my vision and out of my life forever. This was not something I would have ever expected to happen to me. Nevertheless, I'm glad I made it out alive.